your brand new battery might already be dying on the shelf. Sounds dramatic? It's not. Lead acid batteries can lose about 5% charge per month in storage. And once they drop below roughly 75%, sulfation sets in. And that damage doesn't reverse. In the next minutes, I'll show you how to read date codes, spot fresh stock under six months old, and avoid the new but aged trap. Stay, because I'll also reveal the silent drain hiding in modern cars and the exact steps to start your battery's life healthy. And keep it that way for up to a decade. Before we move on, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and like the video. What if the battery you buy today already lost months of life before it ever met your car? That happens more than you think. A lead acid battery sitting on a shelf slowly self-discharges. As it sits at a lower state of charge, sulfate crystals form on the plates and harden over time. The longer it stays low, the tougher those crystals get, and that steals capacity you never get back. Here's where it gets tricky. Stores don't always rotate stock quickly. You can grab two identical boxes, same brand, same group size, and one might be fresh while the other has been waiting nine months. In real-world use, the older one cranks slower on cold mornings, needs a jump sooner, and fails earlier under the same driving pattern. You can avoid that by reading the date code. Most top labels or case stamps use a letter for the month and a number for the year. A for January through L for December, followed by a digit or two for the year. Others use a four-digit weekend year sticker or a Julian date. If the code isn't obvious, look on the top lip, near the terminal, or on a side sticker. Ask the counter person to point out the current decoding for that brand. Aim for stock less than six months from manufacture. If it's borderline, ask for one from the newest pallet in the back. Sulfation tends to start biting once the battery sits below about three quarters charged. And a quick top up doesn't dissolve hardened crystals. That's why a new battery that sat low for months never performs like a truly fresh one. Some suppliers try to prevent this with occasional trickle charging but that can leave a temporary surface charge that makes voltage look fine while the plates remain compromised. Do a simple in-store check. Bring a small digital meter. Ask how long the battery has been at rest since any charge. After at least a few hours off a charger, a healthy flooded battery should read around 12.6 to 12.8 volts and an AGM closer to 12.8 to 13.0. Scan the case for dust buildup, corrosion around caps, or any bulging or warped sides, and skip anything that looks neglected. Even a perfect pick won't last if your car quietly drains it every night. Start right. Choose fresh stock under six months. Verify voltage and avoid rough looking cases. Now that you start healthy, let's stop the hidden drain that slowly steals that health. Your car is awake even when it's parked. How much is it costing your battery every single night? Those little conveniences don't fully sleep. Keyless entry modules wait for the fob. Infotainment memory keeps presets and clock time. Telematics pings networks. Alarms watch for a bump. Multiple control units handshake for a while before they settle down. All of that draws current, and it adds up when the car sits day after day. A healthy resting draw is small, but it isn't zero. Many cars land in the 20 to 50 milliamp range after everything goes to sleep. Others sit higher. 80 to 150 milliamps isn't rare on tech. Heavy models and certain software updates can change how long modules stay awake or whether they wake up again after you lock the doors. When that baseline creeps up, the battery loses charge every night faster than your alternator can repay on your next short errand. Short trips make it worse. A cold start pulls a big chunk then you run fans, heated seats, lights, and phone charging. If you park again after 10 minutes, the alternator never has time to bring the battery back to full. Repeating that all week leaves a chronic undercharge that slowly carves away capacity. Shops confirm parasitic draw with a DC clamp meter on the negative cable or an inline ammeter once the car is locked and allowed to sleep. Sleep time varies. Some cars calm down in five minutes. Others take 30 or more especially if doors were opened or the hood switch is triggered. The tech watches the amperage drop in stages until it stabilizes, then compares the steady reading to the acceptable range for that vehicle. Heat and cold pile on. Heat with low state of charge accelerates grid corrosion and water loss in flooded batteries. Cold doesn't damage plates the same way, but it increases cranking demand and thickens oil, which exposes any lost capacity on a winter morning. Either way, a battery kept near full charge tolerates both far better than one left at 
You can't fix what you can't see, but you can reverse the trend with a simple habit. A $30 smart maintainer and 20 minutes to connect it each week restores full charge, offsets overnight draw, and keeps sulfation at bay. If you park more than a week, use a maintainer. Turn off features you don't use and plan one longer drive weekly to top off. But none of this matters if you chose the wrong battery chemistry for your car's electronics. Two batteries can share the same size and cold cranking amps, yet only one will handle start-stop traffic, big audio, and power-hungry ECUs without fading early. That difference isn't marketing, it's chemistry. Your car's electronics ask for a specific duty cycle, and the wrong type quietly wears out long before the label says it should. Flooded lead acid is the baseline. It starts cars well and keeps costs down, but it doesn't love frequent deep discharges. Enhanced Flooded Battery, or EFB, is a beefed-up flooded design built for start-stop. It uses tougher plate materials and improved separators so it can cycle deeper and rebound more reliably. Absorbent Glass Mat, or AGM, is a sealed design that traps electrolyte in a fiberglass mat. That lowers internal resistance, so it recharges faster and delivers higher bursts of current for modern loads. In practice, EFB survives start-stop better than standard flooded, while AGM excels when you add heated everything, big inrush currents, and lots of short trips. Here's where people get caught. A standard flooded battery will work in a start-stop car for a while. Then repeated engine restarts and partial recharge grind it down and it fails early. Many start-stop systems are specified for EFB or AGM from the factory for that reason. Charging profiles matter too. Alternators and regulators target voltages and charge acceptance that match the original chemistry. Put the wrong type in, and you either undercharge it, which accelerates sulfation, or you overcharge it, which shortens life. There are also 12-volt lithium options in some models. They need compatible battery management, and they cannot be charged with a generic lead-acid charger without risk. The same caution applies to EFB and AGM. Use a charger with the correct mode, because their acceptance and voltage needs differ from basic flooded. A mismatch can damage cells and erase the very durability you paid for. With a healthy start and the right chemistry, you're ready to lock in long life with a light touch routine. 10 years is rare, but it's not fantasy if your climate is mild and your habits are steady. You've stacked the wins already. You started with fresh stock, matched the chemistry to the car, and kept the overnight draw in check. Now you lock it in with small moves that compound over months and years. Heat, vibration, and neglect still wait to cut that timeline short. One long summer highway run at high underhood temps can boil off electrolyte in a neglected, flooded battery. A loose hold down lets the case vibrate, which sheds active material from the plates and raises internal resistance. Even a single corroded terminal adds voltage drop that forces longer cranking and deeper discharge. The fix is boring which is why it works. Make a quick routine. Pop the hood every oil change and wipe the terminals. If you see white or green crust, disconnect. Clean with a baking soda solution, rinse, and apply a thin protective layer. Confirm the hold down is snug so the case can't hop over bumps. Every six to 12 months, test. Use a smart tester or visit a parts store for a state of health check. Then record the number so you see trends, not guesses. If the car will sit, Clip on a quality maintainer set to your chemistry and let it live at full charge instead of drifting down. Cooler is kinder. Batteries survive longer in lower average temperatures. So garage parking helps by moderating daily temperature swings. If you must park outside in summer, a simple underhood heat shield or shade can shave peak temps and slow water loss and grid corrosion in flooded designs. Fix your driving pattern too. Do one longer drive each week, 20 to 30 minutes at steady speed or give it a periodic external charge. The goal is a full state of charge, not good enough after errands. Under load, watch for signs. Slow crank and dim lights point to voltage sag. Replace proactively if repeated tests show declining state of health or if voltage drops hard under a controlled load, even if the car still starts. Do one thing today. Check the date code and confirm the chemistry matches your car. Set a six-month reminder to test state of health. And if you park for days, add a smart maintainer so it returns to full charge instead of hovering low. Next, we'll test three popular maintainers and show which one actually restores charge fastest without overcooking AGM.
so you can set it and stop guessing.